Okay. We were talking about circles? We were talking about chords and arcs. The students in my class are going crazy. They're standing on top of the desk and doing some crazy stuff. <laughs> chords and arcs. A circle. If you want me to do it, congruent. Oh, welcome back, Alexander. In a circle, congruent. Central angles. We'll have what? Congruent chords. In a circle, congruent central angles. We'll have congruent arcs. arcs. So therefore, in a circle, set the plastic, set the plastic to the paper cup. So in a circle, if we have congruent arcs, then we know that the, taking those first two principles, chords are congruent. We have congruent arcs, we have congruent chords. Uh -huh. Congruent interior angles. We talked about this theorem. In a circle, chords that are equal distance from the center are congruent. Chords that are equal distance from the center are congruent. Those are the four theorems we talked about yesterday. In a circle, congruent central angles. Again, central angles are angles that have its vertex on the center. Congruent central angles will have congruent arcs. Congruent central angles will have congruent chords. Congruent arcs will have congruent chords. Chords, same distance from the center, will be congruent. Those are the four theorems we talked about yesterday. Three more theorems we're going to look at. In a circle, if a diameter is perpendicular to the chord, then it bisects the chord and its arc. So here we have a circle. We have a diameter. If it is perpendicular, doesn't matter what chord, if that diameter is perpendicular to that chord, it will bisect the chord and the arc. If a diameter, or that could be a radius as well, because the radius is part of a diameter, is perpendicular to a chord, then it will bisect the chord and its arc. If I had this chord, it does not bisect because it's not perpendicular. The chord and the diameter must be perpendicular. It's converse. If a chord is bisected by a diameter, then it's perpendicular. So if I know that this chord is bisected, then I can conclude, oh, then I know that these two segments are perpendicular. So 12.
12, 8 and 12, 9 are just converses of each other. Theorem 12, 10. In a circle, the perpendicular bisector of a chord contains the center of the circle. So again, what this is saying, if I have a circle, and I have a chord, and I have another line segment that is the perpendicular bisector of that chord, then I know somewhere along the way, on this line here, the center of the circle is. I wish we were going to have time to do constructions because a lot of these theorems we would use in our constructions because we would actually be able to find a center of the circle. If I know the center of the circle is on this line someplace, I don't know exactly where it's at. But if I could take another chord and bisect it perpendicularly, then I know the center is on that line. So if the center is on this line and on this line, then the center must be where? The on the intersection. And we would actually be able to find the center of any circle if I didn't know where the center was to begin with. In a circle, perpendicular bisector of the chord would pass through the center of the circle. Would pass through the center of the circle. Okay, so there's all my theorems. Congruent central angles mean I have congruent arcs. Congruent central angles mean I have congruent chords. Congruent arcs mean I have congruent chords. If a two chords are equal distance from the center, then I know I have congruent chords. If I have a diameter that's perpendicular to a chord, then I know I have bisected chord and arcs. Thank you. If a, if a chord is bisected by another chord, and perpendicular, well, let me say it this way. If a chord has a perpendicular bisector chord, then I know that chord passes through the center of the circle. All right, so let's look at some examples. On page 776. Look at number six. It says the circles are congruent. What can we conclude? Angle A is congruent to angle X. What can I conclude? Miss Abby? Angle A is congruent to angle X. So these two congruent circles. Everybody follow along? Number six? What can I conclude? I got congruent central angles. So therefore, I can conclude what? That they are congruent chords. Which are? Is it B, C, and what are these? And what are they? Side chords. And the chords are what? Diameter. Okay, so state it correctly. Okay, very good. I also have congruent central angles. What can I conclude? Isaac? Alright, we already know that. That's what's given. What can we conclude? And they are? Are congruent. Very good. Number seven. We have congruent angles, congruent angles, I'm sorry, congruent circles. 
They show, show that angle TFE is congruent to angle MKL. What can I conclude? Kiera. Reason? Okay, that's true. All right, what else can we conclude? Roy? Yao? Say that again. All right, reason? All right, segment ET congruent to a segment ML, yes? Caleb, something else we can conclude. Um, segment ET is congruent to segment GE. Reason? Um, well, first it would be vertical angles are congruent, and then it would be uh, segments, or uh, chords of congruent angles. No, chords of Okay, chords of central angles are here, right? Yes. All right, something else. Uh, Shiloh? Reason? Something else we can conclude. Elon? Arc EG is congruent to arc TH. Okay, arc EG congruent to arc TH, correct? Stephanie? Um, say that segment E is congruent to segment HE. Say it again. Segment E is congruent to H segment HE. That's fine. All right, good. Alexander? Angle HFE is congruent to. All right, reasoning. Say your angles again. HFP and BJKN. All right, well, they're not vertical angles. Then uh, arc NL is... BJKN. All right, let's go back to your statement. Your statement is correct. All right, but I, there, is a re I, there is a correct reasoning for this. Corresponding. Do we know that arc JN and arc HG are congruent? Yes. Okay. And we would do that by some transitive properties and stuff. So if those two arcs are congruent, then I know their central angles are congruent. Congruent, yes. So that would be our reasoning there. All right, flip down to number eight. Number eight, find the value of x. Find the value of x. Connor? Is that the line? Yes. Uh, what? X, uh, x equals seven. No. No. You know what, Caleb? <laughs> We know about those two chords? The, they're in the circle. They are in the circle?
circle. What else do we know about those two chords? Uh, that's the radius, the perpendicular to. Nope. That is true. Yeah. But what else do we know about those chords? Anybody? Well, we don't know the O, the bottom one is perpendicular. But what do we know about those two chords? Uh, that they're equal distance. They're equal distance. distance chords that are equal distance from the center are? Congruent. So the one chord is equal to the other chord? The one chord is equal to how much? Seven. No. Is that, does that seven not cover the whole thing? No, if it would, it would be on the outside. Well, seven plus seven. Fourteen. X would be fourteen. Yeah, really? Really? Yeah. Number nine. Someone even knows. Lauren, what is X? X would be 8. Number 10. What would be X? Roy? It would be 10. It would be 10? Number 13. Number 13. Find X to the nearest tenth. Find X to the nearest tenth. All right, we know we have a radius that is perpendicular to a chord. Does what to the chord? Bisects it. So we have a right triangle that has a hypotenuse of? Ten. And a leg of? Eight. So we find the other leg. Which would be what? Pythagorean triple? What would be my common right triangle Pythagorean triple? It would be five. What's that? Would x equal five? Mm. Six. What's my common Pythagorean triple? Mm. Three, four, five. Mm. Or any other multiple of that. So if we multiply the three, four, five by two, we get ten, eight. six, eight, and ten. So this triangle has a hypotenuse of 10, has a leg of 8, so the other leg must be 6. You can do it that way, or you can actually use Pythagorean theorem. Excuse me? The 8 is half of the 16. All right, number 14, looking for x. Looking for x to the nearest tenth. x to the nearest tenth. This one here, you're gonna have to kind of make, draw yourself a line. So we have, you could just make a triangle. This chord. That's the line I'm talking about. We have that perpendicular line, which is 3.6. Looking for x. We know that this line is x. I guess this is not x, what is this? Eight. So if we draw this line here, which is a, but what is that line called? Ambidextrous line. It starts with an X. Auxiliary line. So what is that line called? Come on. Hypotenuse. Yes, what is it? A radius. All radii of a circle are equal. So I know that this length is X. This chord is vice, uh, perpendicular and a Diameter that is perpendicular to a chord does what? Bisects it. So that means this is going to be four. four. So now I got 3.6, four, and then x. I can find x by doing what? Uh, Pythagorean theorem. x squared equals 3.6 squared plus four squared. x equals the square root. 3.6 plus 4 squared. 3.6 squared plus 4 squared. Uh, so it's 5.4 4 
5.4 is the answer. Next one. We have a cord at the center, the distance to the cord. The cord is, the radius is perpendicular. This is 6. The radius is 12. So I'm looking for the cord. So how can I find the piece of the right triangle that I don't know? So 12 squared equals 6 squared plus y squared. 12 squared minus 6 squared equals y squared. y equals 12 squared minus 6 squared, the square root, which would be 8. So that means that this is 8. Wait, no, sure it's 8. Okay. Sorry. I was thinking that 12 was a 10, sorry. 12 squared minus 6 squared, 144 minus 36, take the square root. Just calculate your last today. So, anybody take the calculator out and do it, please. Yeah, it is nine. No, wait, it's not. One forty-four. No, minus thirty-six. I believe it's one hundred eight. It's three. It's six. Square one hundred eight. What is it? Ten point four. Wow. So therefore, x is. 20.8. Look at number 23. Anybody have any questions so far? Again, you use the Pythagorean theorem, your right triangles, and your theorems that we are learning here. Look at number 23. A and B are congruent. So circle A and circle B are congruent. CD is a chord of both circles. If AB is 8, let me go ahead and draw this up here. CD is 8, they tell you that CD is 6, how long is the radius? So we're looking for this. All right, so why are we cutting everything in half? Because it's not the full line. How do we know they bisect each other? Because look. The line wants. We don't know. We don't know anything. Ten.
All right, so they do bisect each other. Because if we look at this, central angle, central angle, correct? Uh, the same chord, correct? So these two central angles are congruent. We can prove that these triangles are congruent to show that these pieces are congruent, so they're bisecting. So therefore, I can say that this line here and this line is perpendicular. So there is a, there is a thought process, even though, yes, we look at it, yeah, they look like they are perpendicular, but there is a thought process to be able to prove that. Uh, but they are bisected, so that means this is three, and this is four, so the hypotenuse is going to be five. My special right triangle is triple, three, four, five. So look at number 24. They say AB is 24. If AB is 24, that means the distance from here to here is going to be 12. They say the radius is 13. Again, a special right triangle Pythagorean triple would be 5, 12, 13. <laughs> The seven goes with a yes. So that is five. So we're looking for CD, and CD would be ten. All right. Turn to page seven seventy eight. Look at number thirty. Look at number thirty. All right, number 30. We have arc CD is 108. We have chord CD is 16. Chord AB is 16. If we have in a circle congruent chords, then we know we have congruent, congruent arcs. So therefore, arc AB would be 108 degrees. Minor arc or major arc? minor arc. How many letters will we use to name a minor arc? Three. Two. 31. What kind of triangle do we have there? Yeah. All right, a 45-45-90 triangle. We're trying to find arc AB. If I look at this, how do we know that's a 45, 45, 90 triangle? And we have a, a right angle. If we continue this drawing, this angle here is 45. So therefore, this angle here is 45. So that means this angle here is 90. So that means this angle here, or this arc here, is going to be 90 degrees. 31 is 90. So we're 32. Oh, well, well, it's Right, so we're looking for arc AB. We 
have a right triangle here. If we know this is perpendicular, I know what with this happens with this? They're bisected. They're bisected, so this is 15. 15. All right, to find this arc, I need to know this central angle. To find this angle, I don't know anything special about it, so I have to use my trigonometry. So how can I find that angle if I know the hypotenuse and its opposite? All right, we're looking for the angle, so we're going to take the sine of the other side. So yes, the arc sine. So what's my angle? 62? I think it's 61.5. 62. 62 degrees? All right. If this is 62 degrees, then this is... 62 degrees. So therefore, this central angle is 124. So this angle is, this arc is 124. That's if we round off to the whole degree. If we round off to a tenth degree, it might be a little bit different. So a whole degree would be fine. Uh, for that. Well, actually, that's right. Look at seven, page 779. Look at 779, number 44. Assume that the lines that appear to be tangent are tangent. O is the center of each circle. Find the value of x to the nearest tenth. What do I know about a tangent line in a radius? What do I know about a tangent line in a radius? All right, perpendicular to point of tangency. Those of you that didn't know it, you need to start memorizing these theorems when we learn them, or we talk about them, uh, so you know. So that means in this circle here, that has this tangent, and this tangent, this radius, and this radius, what do I know about these two angles? They're 90 degrees. Both of them add up to equal 180. So what do I know about this angle and this angle? They're equal 180, so they are supplementary. So therefore, if I know that this is 140, I know that this is going to be 40. Number 45. We have this circle. We have this tangent line, we have this tangent line, and we have this tangent line. We know that this is 6.8. I know that this is 3.5. And I know that this is 2. I am looking for x. Tangent lines from an exterior point, I know is what? <laughs> tangent lines from an exterior point are what? Congruent. So this, this is 6.8. I know that this is 6.8. If this is 2, then I know that this is 2. two. This is 3.5, then I know that this is 3.5. So therefore, x is 5.5. Page 779, the diagram to the bottom right. Identify a semicircle. Somebody tell me a semicircle. Isaac? STQ, arc STQ. Another one. Abby? A semicircle. And what are they? What is it? It is a arc, arc, S, R, Q. 
a minor arc. Elon? S T S N. All right, minor arc. I need how many letters? Two. Two letters. So, um, T S. And what are we calling it? Minor arc. So what is it? Because if you just say S T, I don't know if you're talking about a line, a segment, a ray, a arc. Oh, arc T S. All right, arc T S. Correct. Another minor arc. Elena? Um, arc T Q. Another minor arc. Roy? Arc S R. All right. A major arc. Lauren? Alright, another major arc. Connor? Uh, arc QRT. QRT? What is it? That's an arc QRT. Okay, another major arc. Alexander? Uh, arc STP. Alright, very good. Find the measure of the arcs in angle or circle P. Arc ST. Stephanie? 86 degrees. Arc STQ. Uh, Shiloh? 180 degrees. And arc RT. Caleb? Uh, What's 25? Uh, arc S R. Is it? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Your calculator battery's dying. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's minus the work part. So uh, S T R no T T P R equals. Where are you trying to find the angle? <laughs> Measure of. RT. I'm just looking for arc RT. Arc RT equals or arc yeah arc RT equals. Easy. Um, Give the man a break. 121. 121 degrees. Yes, sir. Very good. Don't forget that. So much pressure with all your eyes looking at you. I know it feels terrible. Oh please. <laughs> what I need. Turn to page 812, please. Page 812. And it keeps my water bottle near me. Always have a drink. These guys out there. That's like might be helping her right about now. It's very fashionable. Alright. Look at the diagram at the top. Give me the length of. Segment AC, Royale, the length of segment AC. What is the length of segment AC? <coughs> We're on page 812, the top of the page, segment AC. What's the length? All right, Kiera, give me a help her out. What is the five. segment AC? Yeah. What is it? Five. Five is correct. Okay. Segment BC. Elon. Uh, six. Remember, tangent lines from an exterior point will be equal. Eight. All right, coming from B, correct? You see the top segment to the circle? B, C, right? Yeah, but if you look at coming from B, yeah. the segment on the top part mm -hmm. to the circle is how much? Five. So therefore, the segment going to the circle on the bottom part would be? Five. Five as well. So our, uh, segment B, C would be how much? Ten. Can you see that one? Yeah, oh, no. It would be three, so eight. Correct. Eight. Okay. Segment... B A. Elena? Mm -hmm. Excuse me? 
Mm-hmm. If you look coming from A, okay, to the circle on the left side, how much is it? Uh, two. So on the right hand side going to the circle, it would be how much? Two. Two, because tangent lines from an exterior point are equal. So therefore, BA would be how much? Seven. Seven. There you go. All right. Uh, X. What is X? Isaac, what is X? X is... One hundred and twenty. One hundred and twenty. Okay. Uh... Go down to the next section, 9 through 13. AB is a diameter. CE equals ED. Then measure angle AEC would be how much? Abby? AB is a diameter. CE is equal to ED, so that means that chord was what? If CE is equal to ED, that means that chord was what? What happened to that chord, CE? If CE is equal to ED, that means CD was what? Bisected. If a chord is bisected by a diameter, then that means they are... If a chord is bisected by a diameter, that means they are what? Perpendicular. perpendicular. So if they are perpendicular, that angle would be 90 degrees. All right, we'll talk more about this tomorrow. Have a good evening. Learn those theorems. Theorem section 12.1 and section 12.2. Learn those theorems.